Hi everyone, this is uh, John the Morgal here, going to do a quick video, uh, sort of a response to a rather recent, or a somewhat recent interview from Mr. Kent Hovind, whom, if you're not familiar with him, he's a young earth creationist, Bible literist, who thinks the flat earth is the stupidest thing he's ever heard. And so what I want to show is uh, a quick clip, or just a, a segment of an interview that he did recently where he seems to have changed his position, if I'm not mistaken, seems to have changed his position on NASA fakery, so he admits that the NASA images are fake, and yet somehow still clings to the idea that NASA really went to the moon and they weren't faking anything, which to me is just ridiculous, but let's roll the clip and I'll interject as necessary. Um, do you think that, you know, where do you think those guys come from? And do you think that perhaps those would be, you know, a civilization? What what could be in the kingdom of darkness in high places? You know, what do you think that could be? What, how, how would that work? I see a spiritual problem there. Uh, it doesn't prove it's not true, but to me, that that's my answer is why I don't believe in that. Uh, there's There's no evidence for it at all. So if somebody wants to believe there's life outside of Earth, they certainly can believe that, but that's not, it's no longer science. It's its in the realm of, of a religion. So I guess I'd have to remain a skeptic uh, on that topic. Well, I don't I, think there's... Uh, I can uh, understand that. I can understand that. I just thought it'd be an interesting question. And I think uh, most people know uh, your point of view on the flat earth if I if I do remember correctly it's uh, that's the stupidest thing you ever heard but <laughs> I just I, I just get I just kind of think it's it's interesting though because uh, it does seem like they're faking uh, quite a bit of the NASA pictures and so what do you think uh, you know might be behind that and do you think we ever went to the moon I mean that's kind of dumb but what do you think yeah I, I do think they went to the moon I think the pictures were probably fake right so he thinks they went to the moon but he also thinks the pictures were probably fake. Okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Let's hear his thinking on this. Uh, my thinking on that is, cameras back in 1969 were not nearly as you know te technically advanced as they are today, the solid state kind of stuff. So, I, I, what I, as I understand it, they were concerned that after spending all this money to get to the moon, the cameras might be damaged or fail on impact. And so they had a studio set up in someplace to look like the moon and so they had actors in there to act like they're walking around on the moon and stuff like that so your reasoning is that they faked the moon landing just in case they actually made it to the moon and solved all the really difficult and impossible problems in order to get there yet they would they they knew going in that they wouldn't be able to retrieve their footage so they had to fake it really that is just I mean, come on, give me a break. Seriously? You can see it's fake. The shadows go a different direction and the flag is moving. You know, of course, there'd be no wind on the moon. According to whom there would be no wind on the moon? Nobody had ever been to the moon before they alleged to have gone. And any uh, quote-unquote known properties of the lunar environment would have been theoretical, best guesses. And for you to say, well, of course, there wouldn't be any atmosphere on the moon, so the flag... Well, yeah, that's a good point. However, what do you have to compare that to other than theory? Um, yeah, so the I Apollo, think Trump, yeah, the last Apollo mission. Yeah. The pictures are fake, but that doesn't prove the moon landing didn't happen. The pictures are fake, but that doesn't prove the moon landing didn't happen. Wow. So we're going to give NASA the benefit of the uh, benefit of the doubt, and even though you admit that they faked the pictures, you're still going to uh, protect them and adhere to their narrative saying that they you know they went to the moon and they faked the pictures that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever and you know uh, if the cameras were damaged on landing or if the film was you know ruined by the radioactive barriers between the earth and the moon you know that's all fine and dandy but how did the astronauts survive through that without even noticing such radio radiation wouldn't the astronauts have been more important to NASA than the film? Wow. 
Really? What about the more recent stuff? Because they, they say they have, like, satellites that are, you know, uh, looking at the Earth, but it seems very cartoonish, especially when the moon passes in front. And, and it seems like, why don't they have, like, a live stream from the moon or from something uh, that's where we can see the entire globe? I think that's what a, a lot of the flat earthers are clinging to. Why can't we see some kind of live stream of the entire globe uh, like we see, you know, the, the, the space station, quote unquote? And do you think people should even be going up there? I mean, uh, back in the day, people would look up and say, you know, those are the heavens. Should we even be sending, you know, phallic-like sim uh, like vehicles up there uh, into the heavens and saying, okay, now we're going to take this property and that property and we're going to claim it for ourselves? Do you, do you think that that's okay? Uh, you know, just to kind of segue a little bit. Well, you can claim anything they want. I could claim that I own the back half of Mars if I want. Who's going to who's going to contest uh, it? And what good would it do? You know, I can't go. Uh, so, but do you think that's asking for trouble? I mean, obviously, no. no you think that's okay? I don't, see, I don't see a big problem with it. If somebody else does, then you know, I wouldn't. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, to me, that's a low priority. It's off my radar. Uh, so, what would justify a high priority? Um, NASA is stealing our money, faking space, tricking entire generations of people into believing a lie so that they can push the globe earth uh, narrative further and that's not a that's not a very big deal they can claim to own mars i mean you know honestly this is just this is just preposterous for someone obviously who ain't no dummy such as kent hovind uh who also claims to take the bible literally in everything else that he does and uses that as his um sort of compass for truth the bible yet refuses to consider the really quite obvious fact that the Earth isn't a spinning sphere and that NASA has been lying about it. Oh, well, they, you know, they lied, they faked the pictures, but they actually did go to the moon, according to Mr. Hoven, which is just, I mean, come on, he's, half, he's halfway there. Uh, once you realize that NASA is totally full of crap, then you really are, you're halfway there. And it took uh, a few years, at least for me personally, uh, to go from moon landing fakery as an obvious truth to flat earth, but it wasn't even presented in the same few years, to me at least. And uh, now that Mr. Dr. Hovind is presented with flat earth, he's denying it, although he's agreeing that NASA faked the moon landing pictures, and it's okay with him that they're launching rockets into the stratosphere. <laughs> or whatever, and then they go back down into the ocean. That's not that big of a deal for him. Wow. Yeah, I, I do think NASA, there's no question our government would lie to us. I think that's obvious, uh, but that doesn't prove they're lying on this instant. That may be true, but it also does not favor them. Uh, it also does not cast them in a very favorable light either. So you agree that the moon landing pictures were faked. You agree that the government lies to us. But they couldn't have possibly been lying about going to the moon. And, you know, I get it. I understand you grew up in that era. You know, you have fond memories of the Americans beating the Russians to the moon. You have uh, probably a NASA tattoo somewhere where the sun don't shine. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but really, I get it. I understand that it's difficult for people of that era to realize that that, that whole thing was a hoax. And so you're clinging to an emotional set of beliefs as opposed to rationally, skeptically analyzing the data. And so that makes you the opposite of a scientist. And I'm sorry, but it casts a shadow of doubt on the other work that Dr. Hovind has done, at least for me personally, because if he's going to be that just blatantly ignorant about NASA and their forgeries, then what else is he missing, right? And I could listen to Kent Hovind all day, but when he brings this sort of thing up, it's like, goodness gracious, what is this guy thinking? As far as being able to see the curvature of the Earth, um, you know, two ants standing on a 10-foot ball, it looks really flat to them. Perhaps, but can ants do spherical trigonometry? Can ants use telescopes and uh, super zoom digital cameras? 
Are ants even concerned with the shape of the object that they're on? No, they're not. And, you know, if a basketball is awfully flat to a couple of ants, don't you think that if you were to, say, raise them in altitude over that uh, ball, they would see the curve, even in their little ant minds? I mean, this is ridiculous. The Earth isn't a ball. Uh, any curvature that you think you might have seen is an illusion. Look at high-altitude weather balloon footage, Dr. Hovind, of over 100,000 feet in the air. The Earth is a plane. It's not a sphere period, whether you're an ant or whether you're a water buffalo. It isn't a sphere. We went down to the water in Pensacola and got down two inches above water level on a calm day with a telescope and looked across uh, three miles of the Pensacola Bay and you could not see the bottom two or three floors of the hotels that were right across the bay just three miles away. You raised your camera two inches above the water? And the bottoms of the buildings three miles away were obscured. The bottom two or three floors were obscured. That is the natural operation of perspective, Dr. Hoven. Um, the ground, in, in your visual perspective, is more or less, if you're, especially if you're two inches from the ground, is going to be much closer to your line of sight than anything higher than two inches above your line of sight right and so what's going to happen according to perspective is especially from just two inches in altitude above that water is the bottom water is going to obstruct your vision at a nearer point than two or three floors above water is distant from three miles away uh, even according to the accepted curvature calculations if you were three miles away, and you didn't, you weren't very accurate on that, but three miles away and two inches above the water, technically there should have only been six feet of curvature, right? And we all know that two or three floors is much more than six feet. And so where are you getting all that extra curvature from? Well, you're not getting extra curvature. It's the operation of perspective. And this can be difficult for some people to grasp, but I, I really don't find it uh, above Dr. Hoven's mental acuity to realize that uh, how perspective works. And so you're really going to have to go back to 101 classes on this in order to understand um, how perspective works. And so the idea that you can put a telescope two inches above the water and see to infinity across that plane of water is preposterous. You're, you were not being serious about that. Um, we can see over 50, close to 60 miles across water to see the Chicago skyline from Grandmere State Park, for example. And there's plenty of other examples than that. Uh, look at mountain ranges that are 100 miles away that you can see clearly that should be well beneath that alleged curvature, which doesn't exist. Even the tips of mountains 100 miles away should not be visible, yet we can see them. And other clear indications, scientific, test testably demonstrable, that the Earth is round. Uh, San Francisco Bay is pretty long. And the Golden Gate Bridge goes across. Both of the uh, columns that hold up the bridge are perpendicular to the Earth, but they're five inches out of parallel. Really, is that a fact? Is the towers of the Golden Gate Bridge are five inches out of level because the Earth is a sphere? Okay, well, first of all, I would probably go ahead and say with certainty that Dr. Hovind, nor really probably anybody, has gone to one tower and leveled it, and then gone to the other tower, checked that level, you know, using a spirit level or whatever, and then figured out that one of them was misaligned to the other. Um, in fact, if the Earth was spherical with the laws of gravity, etc., then there'd really be no way to tell. Uh, honestly, there wouldn't. Um, and if you could tell which, you know, whether they were perfectly aligned or not, it really wouldn't make a difference. I mean, look at the bridge. It's obviously a curved bridge, right? You can see the sea level beneath it is a perfectly, absolutely 100% straight line. And the bridge itself is curved. And so does this mean that they built the Golden Gate Bridge with the presumption that the Earth was a sphere? And that's why we can see that it obviously doesn't 
match the horizon and so they built it an error or is it merely a myth that those two towers are five inches out of alignment with one another based on the theory that the earth is a sphere and I would say the latter I would say it's probably a myth based on the assumption that the earth is a sphere that those two towers would be misaligned to one another now if they are actually misaligned to one another and that can be verified it doesn't prove the earth is a sphere it proves that people assume the earth is a sphere and the bridge is curved which it obviously is and the horizon obviously is not so to make this claim about the Golden Gate Bridge that you've probably read somewhere that you have never personally verified that honestly I don't even see how you could verify it with a spirit level maybe if you had lasers but even then over a mile you've got to deal with refraction and so we're dealing with an assumption here Dr. Hovind this is not scientific evidence of a spherical earth it is scientific evidence of a curved bridge in a world full of people who believe the earth to be a sphere although it is not and the the fact that the Golden, Ga uh, Golden Gate Bridge is a curved bridge over a flat plane of water is clear to anyone who looks at this picture uh, closely and furthermore to make the claim that one of those towers is misaligned to the other by five inches is indeed a ridiculous claim that will probably never be verified now if you're looking at the plans of the Golden Gate Bridge perhaps they planned it around a spherical earth but at the end of the day the only thing that's going to prove a spherical earth would be earth curvature not engineering designs for lengthy bridges because the earth is round it's curving there's loads of scientific evidence, plus all the other planets we look up and see are round. Loads of scientific evidence. Well, would you mind citing one piece of this evidence that supports the notion that the Earth is curved? There's loads of it according to you. And you mentioned the other planets are round, therefore we must be round. Well, you know, that is sort of, you know, okay logic. That's how we're convinced very early in our lives that's how we're convinced that the earth is curved by well look at the moon that appears to be spherical look at the sun that appears to be spherical therefore the earth is a sphere um, but the, the thing is Dr. Hoven is the earth isn't a planet the earth isn't anything like the wandering stars it's nothing like the moon or the sun it is completely different than any of that the earth is the physical plane and the celestial bodies or celestial lights exist in the non-physical astronomical plane or the non-physical astral plane and to say that you know the moon appears to be spherical therefore the earth must be spherical is non-scientific ridiculous garbage we need to use basic geometry and basic physics to either prove or disprove whether the earth is a sphere not the moon, not the sun, not the wandering stars, none of that. Uh, all of that could be spheres or triangles or cones or plates. It doesn't matter. We're talking about the Earth here. And using basic, basic geometry, which means geometry means measure the Earth literally, and physics, which is essentially the study of bodies in motion. All of the real geometry and real physics proves conclusively that the Earth is not a spinning spheroid. It is not. And that is supported by loads of physical evidence, which, you know, watch one of my hundreds of videos and figure it out. But you can't point to a bridge or the wandering stars or the celestial lights and say, see, we live on a sphere because the objects in the night sky appear to be spheres. It's non sequitur. It is assumption and it is wrong. See fact. around, we can see the other planets turning. We see the different parts of Jupiter and Saturn. And really? So you're claiming that you can see Jupiter and Saturn rotating from a ground-based telescope? Or are you saying that you can see it from NASA because you honestly, really, truly cannot see anything but a blurry, out-of-focus light when looking at the wandering stars? Okay, and so what you'll get is a CG rendering like this of Jupiter uh, but in terms of what you're actually seeing through the telescope is like this it's a blurry light and then filters and CG are added in order to get that end result that you see here but in terms of seeing the wandering stars spinning or rotating on their axis that's a myth 
perpetuated by NASA, but really what you can see through a telescope is a blurry, out-of-focus light source. And by the way, the very fact that we can see Jupiter and its moons with the naked eye, by the way, conclusively proves that it is not 360 million miles away minimum. Uh, the, the size of Jupiter would not allow for it to be visible with the naked eye, let alone its moons visible from the naked eye at that distance is preposterous. Uh, furthermore, the inner solar system, uh, in other words, Venus and Mercury, should not be visible at night period. They would always be aligned, uh, aligned to the daytime side of the Earth, especially in the case of Mercury. Yet in this picture here, we can clearly see Venus, Mercury, and Jupiter nearly perfectly aligned on May 26 of 2015, I believe, according to stardate.org, which is physically impossible given the fact that Venus and Mercury are allegedly in the inner solar system, which means they would always be aligned to the day side of the Earth, especially in the case of Mercury. Also, the fact that we can see a uh, full moon during the day, oftentimes, happens a lot, is incompatible with the heliocentric model. You would simply not be able to see a full moon during the day given the heliocentric model. Uh, on the same token, uh, the crescent moon you know, the phases sandwiching new moon or no moon uh, would simply always be a daytime phenomenon, and yet we can s clearly see crescent moons in the middle of the night, well after sunset all the time, which yet again is incompatible with the heliocentric model. It does not work. A god is a god of order. Uh, he said he sits on the circle of the earth, and I, I point out to the flat earthers, I said, look, I taught geometry for 15 years, there's no such thing as a circle. There's no such thing as a circle. Yet, you claim to take the Bible verbatim literally. So why would it say circle if there is no such thing? How can God sit over top of something that doesn't exist? Uh, and I don't care how long you've taught geometry for. A circle is a shape. And a sphere is something different. But to say that a circle doesn't exist is just ridiculous. Let's hear your thinking on that. A circle is a purely imaginary construct. I mean, it's used for geometry purposes, but technically it doesn't exist. A circle is an imaginary construct. Well, I mean, in that sense, you know, I guess all shapes are imaginary constructs. I really don't understand where you're going with this, but let's just continue. So obviously he's talking about a sphere, a ball. Obviously you're making crap up as you go along. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not arguing the Bible here, you are, but it clearly says even in the original language, uh, there's a difference between circle and sphere, chug and kador, however you pronounce them, but there is a difference. A circle is not a sphere. Because a circle, if it has any depth or height at all, is now a cylinder. Give me a break, seriously. I mean, come on. So in order for you to believe that the earth is flat, the Bible would have to say God sits above the cylinder of the earth? We're not talking about a cylinder here. We're not talking about really a circle by your definition of it either. Uh, the earth isn't a perfectly two-dimensional flat land. There's obviously depth and lumpiness to it, but it is absolutely no sphere. Now, the sun is uh, apparently making circuits overhead every single day, concentric with the North Pole, apparently, and so that's where we get this whole idea of a circle, and I, I think the Bible accurately states that. But for you to say that God actually meant sphere when it clearly says circle, and you know, you're arguing semantics that technically it should have said cylinder, give me a break. And I can go dig a hole in my yard and prove to you the earth has some depth to it. Yes, you can dig a hole in your backyard and prove that the earth has some depth to it. Therefore, it's a sphere. Come on, man. Yes, sir. Well, it's not a sphere. Yes, sir. Where, where do you think, uh, just to kind of... So, at the end of the day, Dr. Kent Hovind agrees that NASA sent us fake pictures and tricked everyone into believing they went to the moon, but they actually did go to the moon. 
uh, the earth is spherical because the Bible says it's a circle and technically God should have called it a cylinder. And you can dig a hole in your backyard to prove that it isn't a perfectly you know, two-dimensional flat circle. I mean, come on, give me a break. Do you really expect the, the Bible to say and God sits above the circular, cylinder, lumpy earth? No, it just simply states he sits above the circle of the earth. And, you know, quite frankly, this doesn't prove anything, to be very honest. Uh, the only thing that will prove Earth's uh, sphericity and axial rotation would be curvature and high velocity rates of spinning near the equator and tropics and really anywhere uh, distance from the Arctic circles, according to a spherical Earth. So this whole thing, you know, maybe perhaps one day at this rate, it might take another nine years uh, for Dr. Hovind to realize the truth. Um at least he's now admitting that NASA's images are fake, and he clearly agrees with that. But he's still going to hold the position that they did actually go to the moon and they weren't faking shit. I mean, this is just ridiculous, but hopefully you guys uh, will see that... Uh, I don't think that Dr. Hoven is being deceptive. I just think that he has a lot of time and energy invested into the whole idea that the Earth is a sphere. He, he will seem to be foolish amongst his peers if he goes and, and uh, even thinks along these lines. And, you know, he's, again, he's obviously no dummy. I think he's done some really excellent work. But in, in terms of the Earth, uh, he's just as deceived as everyone else. And so hopefully one day we will hear Dr. Kent Hoven explaining how clearly obvious it is that the Earth isn't a spinning sphere and is thus a stationary plane. Thanks so much for your time, y'all. Thanks for watching. Spread the word. Spread the world. And peace.